This is Flash Somebody at in a perfect world on the real liberty media dot com tonight. Well, my tonight, you guys is usually in the daytime if you're live. You get me in about I guess it was we decided on one o'clock in the afternoon. Anyway, um this is from coming from the real liberty media dot com chat room where we uh we tend to gather our minds and think about stuff and so on. Anyway, say hi to the crowd tonight. And Grimner does all the, I guess, the production of this. Puts it out there for people to hear it on um, BitChute. Where else? Uh, we're on um, Minds.com. No, we're not. You can put it on Minds. I guess they wouldn't necessarily use it. But uh, Spreaker, YouTube, all the the places where you can go to click on something to open it. And if you're already here, you just got bored. (laughs) So tonight we're going to say hi to the people in the reallibertymedia.com land. And we got the bot barman, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Moose Girl, really? (sighs) Figured she'd be busy. Uh, We got Miss Kate. Hey, we got... uh, Brackets DC, I guess that's, I don't know how to read that thing. Asmo, Chalcedony, Circle, hey, sir, I love you back, sweetie. Uh, Chloe, Chloe, <coughs> me, <coughs> cough, cough. Gooberzilla, Graham Z, I B, Don C, Pox Fight, Pox Phone, Rain, RLM Fluke, Rob Works, Rums, Vinnie Woodman. Phantom, Beetle, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Gromit, Guest 829, Java Doctor 2, Kozu, mm-hmm. Nensen, Dubois, Ponder Gander, Pox Home, Pone Sauce, Skittle. That's the, that's the RLM crew on this Tuesday, the 15th of, and I said December last Last time I did a show, I think it was Saturday. I don't know. I was thinking January, but, you know, after a couple of pipe loads, one month looks just like another. But this is the 15th day of January 2019. And uh, coincidentally, it's my my youngest daughter, who's still pissed at me at for a few years now. Uh, it's her birthday today. So, to the airwaves out there, happy birthday, Bump. And, uh, I'm not real. Oh, oh, did, did I do it wrong? Hold on, let me see. Um, it says connected. Okay, let me go back to the thing and, uh, fix that for you, Grimner. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Um, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I want to go to a broadcasting. I'm going to, just stutter and statter through here because I got to do the uh, not the date but the the room. Uh oh, we're having a meltdown right here live. Okay, because <laughs> I can't seem to do two things at one time in a correct order. But thanks for reminding me there, Grimmy. Because uh, doing this stuff solo is the that was the problem. You know, I've just not. Uh, talented in every area there is to be talented at so we're going to go change that to this one now to uh, in a perfect world I did change the date though I believe so we've got that sorted yeah anyway thanks for bearing with me on that one Uh, but I've been doing this for a while if you know who I am you know who I am it's not so much about that anyway it's more about the information that I'm I'm trying to talk about because it's not popular. People do not want to hear it. And uh, I seen a link today on BitChute from a guy. And he's got a big following, big crowd. I, I'll get the name of the thing before the... Well, anyway, I posted on the realliberty.org. It's got a, a link over there. <clears throat> it's the only thing I posted today. So if you go there and you know me, you can go look at it. Rob Works saw it. 
And Rob even went out of his way to tell me earlier that it sounded good. So I would assume, you know, that the three of us are on the same page. And the link was about, you know, if you don't, if you don't enjoy, so to speak, or not really enjoy, I was being smart ass. If you don't understand what he's talking about in the first place, and you're, a, you know, behind the state and voting and cops and badges and laws and politicians and all that expense to, you know, for nothing to 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 serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever in the overall course except to make him miserable <laughs> but you know if you tell people that you know the beating they're taking doesn't hurt enough after a few years they're going to just accept whatever you do and they're going to say call it what you like and they're just going to keep letting you do it now me I don't, I don't know. I I get to a point with people where I've had enough, you know, okay, you were funny at my expense, but, you know, now it's not funny. So you should have quit way before it got to this point, but you didn't. And not everybody's a Hansel, you know. I I have to... I have to care enough about a person to make this decision in the first place. The less I give a shit about you... Um, the less a- you know, the less action I'm really gonna take. <laughs> so I don't know. All I can say is listen to uh, listen to how you talk to me, and uh, I don't know. I hope that you don't do that to anybody else because it didn't feel very nice when you did it, and that should clear up that problem. Anyway, so yeah, I think. Through the movies, you know, through the media, through um, music and all the shit that we're addicted to, food and wavelengths and all the combination of all the input creates this very negative society that we live in. And I say that because, I mean, I'm not the most positive person there is, but even I have a nice thing to say now and again. And I've really come to notice that the bulk of communication in general doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any substance to it. You know, it's it's about judgment and I'm better than you and your country's burning to the ground while mine is growing and you know profits are still good. <laughs> but you know, the only thing that we all seem to share is that there's no sunshine, okay? Everybody's got winter time right now, it seems, no matter where they're at. And that time of year does get a little depressing to the overall, you know? just It puts an edge on existence that isn't always very comfortable, where being in the sun, that's relative. If you're too sunny you go seek shade when you're too cold <laughs> all you have is um, artificials and you know heat other things you can find lots of ways to stay warm exercise uh, wear a lot of clothes put blankets on I mean there's answers to that shit weather hot cold but without the sun <laughs> and they've they've printed people's opinions about this they call it studies Eh, maybe they're studies, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just like mine, just an opinion about how they see a certain thing. But the ones that I like, those are the ones that I agree with. And so if I agree with it, then I'm definitely going to repeat it. You know, There's nothing in life in 59 years that I could ever do that nobody else on the planet hasn't done. I mean, we're in some respect we're all the same, you know. Just when you start nitpicking and oh, but this guy's an excellent this and that girl's an excellent that. Well, yeah, because probably they're early in life, somebody guided them towards pursuing that particular thing, and they became good at it and followed through. And then some people like me that just 
good enough at shit to not particularly care what it was. You know, whether I was selling truck tires or unloading a truck, it was work. Work didn't, <laughs> uh, how do you put it? It didn't have a, a not necessarily a bad side, because I'd accepted work was just part of life. If you want to eat and you don't want to live in jail, if you get caught stealing, then go work. There's always plenty of it. I was just bragging to Cirque about that earlier today, is that no matter where I was in the United States, at the time I lived there, in all those years, I never had a problem creating work. And that's going you know, outside of the, the system, what the system called work. And, you know, just do services for, like, for trades. <laughs> it was... It was beautiful, and here I am all these years later, and uh, I thought I had a, enough to work, take care of myself so that I'm not crippled yet, and that's my big accomplishment, because my little brother got crippled at a job, so hmm, I looked at him and I thought, my God, hmm, I'd rather walk. I'd rather walk comfortably than with a cane, you know, and and I don't know if that's a decision you can make or not, but you can do things that will not ensure, but bring it more uh, onto the positive side that things will go the way you're, you want them to. And uh, But we're not taught that part, man. I think we're, through the movies and the TV shit, you know, they, they encourage all this stealing and lying and deception and secrets and all the things that really, they fuck us all up. You know, because, good God, if Ford Motor Company should ever steal uh, General Motors secrets, they they might make a good car. Then what would happen, right? And, uh, you know, when you think about it, the affordable car that pretty much died in about, what, 1968, 69, right in there, when they stopped making the, the nice Mustang, the shit was over, about 1970 even. It had a nice Mustang, but it wasn't as uh, appealing to me as as uh, the first one they come out with. And as the years rolled by, you just see the the beauty of the car just go to shit. And and the proof in that is if you want to see beautiful pieces of equipment <laughs> that you know that you can drive or look at in a garage or polish on Sunday and you know whatever, go you'll go with the old cars. So, like, I've had I've had Sir held hostage one day when I was playing a link of of the lowriders that get up on on three wheels and you know dance their cars with hydraulic jacks, and that's I don't know. There's just uh, so much in life that you can enjoy just by looking at it, you know. And some people I don't know. Some people like to get their hands dirty and get in there and, and create things, but. You know that argument people have about well, if nothing, if you didn't have to work for a living, what would you do? You uh, know, I think that all of us have something in us that we enjoy doing, and if that's encouraged by grown-ups when you're a child, chances are good that when you grow up, you'll have an interest in them. You'll learn how to do them. And my mom encouraged me to to speak. And she encouraged me to, to draw and work with my hands and such. So I, I would always, in my adult life, have a, a trade that no matter what, where you, even in jail, jail is a terrible place to be, but if you go to county jail like I did for a few months, <laughs> you'll you'll find out that because you have the ability to read and write, other people don't have or draw that uh, you can use that to barter for shit, you know, commissary and crap like that, in jail, because it's a it's a trade. And my mom was right. Well, it not only works in jail, but I was just using it as the most bizarre place that I, I ever considered uh, reading and writing would ever do anybody any good. I thought jail was where all the bad people went. <laughs> nah, that's, most of those people are just uneducated. They don't know how to read and write. you got to read them their letters. They don't even know how to read the incoming letters 
from their girlfriends or their their parents or whoever they're you know writing to and and that's not everybody but it was enough people in there that were like that that it was uh a when an awakening i suppose it was kind of like a a good experience to go through in a negative way because well one being locked up sucked but you know uh it's more of a open. It, everybody can see what everybody's doing, so there's no shaky, weird shit going on. But the behavior of prison is, uh, I don't know, it's very hierarchy based and segregated. You're in this, you know, if you're this race, you're with these people, and that's the way it was where I was. And it, yeah, it was like 90 days of that shit. And I went, ah, okay, but. I don't know. I didn't have money for bail, so they didn't want to let me out until. <laughs> oh, I had a mess. People, people can get themselves into just the the dumbest situations because uh, we have these enforcers, <laughs> and and uh, the and nobody knows what's going on. So you know, you say this and you say that, and next thing you know, somebody's in jail. Now there's even. Uh, I think I seen yesterday that somebody can call in on a on a phone and just accuse you of something in America now. And it's not just state, it's like state after state after state and do some kind of a, a accusation, whatever it may be, that will bring the police down to, to investigate it. Ah, it was that thing about the little girl that Grim put up on RLO. Nine year old girl wants to make a few bucks. And her mom thought she was helping her, so she made a, a pamphlet kind of a thing, distribute to the neighbors. The kid was looking for extra work. And the woman gets accused of child uh, child abuse. And she's going to work the kid to death and all this kind of nonsense. And it, it was the, the parent behaving on the... You know, for the sake of the child. I got it 30 seconds. I got to let the dog out. Okay, I don't know if that was 30 seconds, but it was the cat. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry about that if you're listening tonight. I'm not having a very composed evening. My mind is, as usual, scattered, but uh, uh, I'm just going to have to tackle the radio solo. I keep killing off my partners. I've killed more partners on RLM than anybody else. It's like my claim to fame. So I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up my status quo uh, on in a perfect world, and in a perfect world, wow. I don't. I think there's people all over the world that are uh, right now. They're calling for change. They call these people the yellow vest. Now, if indeed what I'm seeing on the internet is true, seems very credible. There seems to be a little misunderstanding in France. And you got these folks, they get dressed up on the weekends, and they go out and they call themselves the Yellow Vests in protest, specifically in protest of the immigration. And, well, there you go. Well, who's all responsible for all the problems that we have? Well, now the way I understand this is we all live in these free lands where people vote. And these people, England, America, France, Germany, they vote. They've got politicians that represent them. Well, these five countries have decided that certain other countries uh, need to be changed. They don't like these other countries. But they change them and they fuck them up more than they were when they decided to, to change them. And then they lie to people about what led up to this great change. Why do you have to go out there and, and kill and bomb and destroy everything? Well, they will never tell you the truth. They just make up stories. Because if they cared, uh, there probably wouldn't be tent cities in California. But somehow or another, I don't know how the government does this, they seem to pass their self off as a caring entity that's looking out for you 
and I can't for the world ever find even one thing the government does for me or offers me that doesn't have strings attached to it that always will work out against me in the long run, like student debt. Damn, when I was growing up, going to college wasn't um, it wasn't that extravagant to where you, you got yourself in debt for a, an amount of money that it would take you three jobs to pay off after you graduate. So, no, well, that was my attempt at something funny. But apparently, tonight, on in a perfect world, we're just not connecting. You know, I'm not connecting with myself because there's nobody else here. Cirque took Hannibal out for a walk. And that's the kind of wife I got. She'll even take the dog out for a walk when I have a radio to do and the dog's a little itchy. So, hmm. in a perfect world, things work out that way. But the hmm, my world is perfect. You know, the the world that I I live in in my head, I don't I don't see all the uh, all the negatives and all that bad shit and all. I I ain't watch movies and see all that, but in real life, none of that shit ever happens. My real life is so boring, and. Unless I was looking for it not to be, you know, I guess life's always had just kind of, maybe not boring, but um, quiet, peaceful. You know, once I hit a certain age, the, the music level went down at three in the morning. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That, that was a good joke, though. Anyway, but no, I've had my, you know, my days, my 20s, a little too loud to the music and a in an apartment building or but not a general nuisance because I was usually away anyhow I was not one to sit home in the evenings you know and then when I was one to sit home in the in the evenings even my early early mid-twenties when I d was home is like okay shut that shit out out there leave that out there it's not in here and things were more quiet and peaceful but I still I didn't own a TV set so I did a lot more artwork back in those days. And then I was younger, so my interests were, uh, they weren't so defined. You know, They were more broad when I was in my 20s than I, they are. I'm now 59. I'm sure you've all heard it a hundred times. But if there's anybody new out there, just, sometimes we get some good topics, and sometimes not so much. It just depends on the listener, you know, because... Uh, I'm not the guy that thinks the world revolves around me. I'm the guy that thinks that my world revolves around me. Let's see. I'm going to give the thing a uh, RLM chat a poke and see if anybody's chatting. Um, no, Vinny, I don't care. You, thanks, but no. Um, and we got some posts from Woodman and... That's about it. It's a quiet, quiet afternoon in reallibertymedia.com land. But there's good news, except the bad news. Moose said that she uh, she was going out to lunch. I guess it was yesterday. She slipped on the ice. And, you know, caught her on the butt and her elbow. So, uh, you got to, uh, you know... <laughs> You just got to expect that stuff in life happens. And uh, <laughs> I got a little distraction here. Sorry about that, folks. But I was just trying to enlighten the, the new, you know, the new people that didn't know if you hadn't heard it by now, because she was saying it earlier today. But still, ouch, you know. And it's good of her to, to uh, you know, not get greedy and start suing people and then making, you know, acting the fool over an accident that hmm, maybe somebody's responsible for the accident happening, you know, something like that. But you're splitting hairs at a certain point. And, uh, wow, I'm getting distracted here on the side and I do not want to take the call. So bear with me, folks, but I don't have any beep, beep, the beepers going off on the on the show, so let me find a topic. Be some. Oh, what I was going to. I'm already talking about them. 
the yellow vests out of Europe, in France in particular, were talking all week about doing a bank run on, the, on Saturday. And specifically on the Internet, what I saw was specifically aimed at Rothschild Central Bank. And I was, wow. <laughs> I thought, could this be another 911 or another one of these setups? Because <laughs> I'm so isolated out here. I'll, I'll never, excuse me, I'll never see any of the uh, devastation that, that comes to cities. It won't hit where I'm at. I'm in a very weird place. And... I guess by chance or whatever, but Cirque loves it here. And she's even out in the nighttime. And we're so safe. She can take the dog out for a walk in the, you know, in the dark and nothing happens to her. It's a great place to live. I recommend it to everybody to live somewhere where when you see other people, you can wave at them at three in the morning and go home. If you were, you know, if you happen to pass somebody at that time, it wouldn't matter here. Um, it'd just be two people going home late, but it sure wouldn't ever end up in any trouble. And uh, I, well, not ever. You know, you have those rare occasions, but the ones that I've read about here over the last four years I've been here, there was a, a family thing that ended up in a murder, and they were from somewhere else. So the violence amongst their own, they, I don't know. I have yet to see any of it. Uh, occasionally we get an ambulance because I think, you know, somebody got like a heart attack or ill, you know, but I don't know. So retirement village <laughs> by the beach. <laughs> it's funny. So, and, uh, I, I've got so little to complain about that. It, it almost angers me, you know, that everybody else is, um, so, I don't know. They're they're caught up in their own ball of uh, shit within the ball of shit, and don't seem to know how to separate out of it and look up look upon it. You know, it's it doesn't involve me. We might involve you, um, but I don't see how it could possibly involve me, because you know when I'm not there, uh, no who who would know? <laughs> you know, out of sight, out of mind, and that's I guess that means something to somebody maybe <laughs> i'm trying to read the chat about no nah, i i can't do that anymore vincent you, you you've just done too you, no i'm not i'm not that big hearted you know you go play with hansel and you you enjoy yourself and i i'm not doing that anymore i had fun it was wonderful but no more you enjoy yourself anyway uh, ratings? I, um, nah. hmm. Yeah, no, I didn't bring it up on the... Well, I was just finishing it because Kate brought it up in the chat. We're a small community at reallibertymedia.com. We're having a little in-house nonsense because... I've changed my mind about something. I've been known to do that. I've been known to tell people well fucking ahead of time, you know. You can push me around and then eventually I'm going to I'm going to laugh with you for a few times and then eventually you're going to do it one time too many and I'm not that's it. Be careful what you tell me cuz I'll I'll do exactly what you asked me to do. Now that you've asked me to do it, I'm I've done it. That's all. Nothing big. It's just life, you know. Just people trying to communicate with each other, and it's hard. I understand that. I've said on the dork table fifteen times. I believe communication is the problem, not the answer. But then I dug through it and got introduced to people like Larry Woods and Rob Works, Don C. There's, you know, people that I, I read their chat when they're doing the tech talk stuff. And, uh, there's a lot of smart fucking guys. Gooberzilla. Uh, who else? Uh, I'm not real good with repeating the names. You know, but there's people on the Internet that know a lot of stuff, you know. And some of it, if you listen to them, you can find an application, you know, improve your own life. I got a lot of stuff from Miss Mary. I thought when I first, you know, when I was first married to Cirque, 
damn, that was a weird period of time because uh, I had been living in England, eating a lot of greasy uh, food, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, fish food too, and uh, potatoes, and just eating wrong. And then I got here and, and her idea of cooking and had a lot to do with vegetables. So anyway, to make a long story short, it had a lot of um, meat clogging me up. So switching over to the vegetables was, it wasn't the most comfortable day or two of my life. But I survived it, and, you know, because my body had been uh, accustomed to the battering I was giving it. And, and this is the way I look at it. You know, it's like uh, when I've cut my finger, well, the damn thing, when it starts to heal, it starts to itch. And then, you know, if it's deep enough, it, it'll irritate you in other ways as it heals to make you want to make it worse again. So, you know, the temptation to destroy something that needs to heal is, it's, it's deep in me. And well, I still try to avoid cutting my fingers, you know. If doing, you know, it's like this. They say, doctor, doctor, it hurts when I do this. And the doctor says, patient, patient, stop doing that. So, uh, there you go. Something's a pain in the ass, don't do it. So if I'm a pain in the ass, don't do me. Or at least if you don't, you know, don't say it. That that was wrong. <laughs> I'm still on that because it's so... Well, it's amusing now, but it wasn't for about a week. I went, wow, man. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. It just... Uh, in a perfect world, there is, uh, I guess, a, sub a subjective way to look at the world and, and think it's perfect. And it is perfect. It's that we're on here, these humans, right? And we're following and we're financially supporting all the wrong people. Everybody that's in control of power, seats of decision, money, resources, all these people are manipulating the shit out of the populations. And Saturday I went off on this rant on my other thing I do, the dork table. And I was talking, I picked a random link, just the first thing. I wrote fluoride in the browser. And the first link it brought up was this horrible story that ended in fluoride is a waste product from a manufacturing process, too. That they used to supply it from Florida. Now they get the supply for the American fluoridation from China, and that has arsenic on top of everything else that's bad in in fluoride, but yet they pitch it to you in the advertising world as it's good for your teeth. Now, technically, this may very well be true, is that the, uh, the shit helps whatever make your teeth look white. What they don't tell you is that <laughs> you've got a part of your brain that most of us don't even recognize that we have because they try to shove the shit about. Well, you only use 10% of your brain. Sure, and that's the way that works. I only use 12% of my liver. I only use 8% of my heart. Well, 19% of my left finger. I mean, it's stupid. What the fuck is wrong with me? How do we get conned and, and bullshitted by these eggheads? Because they got a... a a diploma from another it's a secret society kind of thing right? we call it public education but now you have to go into debt for a hundred grand to get into the club and if you're from the poor side of the world if you're rich already what does it matter <laughs> you're already in the club <laughs> but there's so many poor people like us there's millions and millions and millions. Billions. Wait a minute. What am I thinking? Millions. Uh, I'm in a really small place. There's only six million here in this country. And uh, it's a small little dinky shit country, too. I'll tell you, it's a good thing they got a small population. I would recommend that to anybody. You know, and you would think that uh, a place like this might grow, but there's no there's nowhere to develop. And I don't foresee this becoming a Copenhagen. <laughs> Not in my lifetime. You know, anyway. Maybe 20 years from now, but uh, for the for the immediate future of my lifespan, nah. 
growth will be there, but it will be minimal. You know, like they do a lot of road – I guess they've got to spend the tax money that they collect here. They're, you know, if they're responsible for taking it, these people seem to be responsible to some level to put something into the society using that money. And they're constantly improving or building like they're – they're doing something new to the roads. They're putting up a, a divider. <laughs> I don't know why. But, see, that's what I mean. Is These laws will create work for people so that they have to do this by law. So let's get your brother-in-law, Steve, over here, or Bjorn. <laughs> and, you know, Bjorn can have the contract to, to, to do this next job. Just write this law and we'll vote on it. It's a, it's a game. It's a money game. Now, I'm sure it, it didn't begin that way completely. And at least in the beginning, it had to have the illusion of give the give the little people something. And here we are in 2018, right? Instant every fucking thing you can possibly imagine. Now, you can even, if you got enough money, you can go get a, a sex bot and have yourself a big night out, you know? Not have to pay pay for dinner bill or uh, movies or whatever the hell kind of crap you do, and still go home and you know have that special lady service your call. <laughs> I laugh when I think about that shit. I can't, I can't imagine a, a world without women would not be a perfect world. <laughs> oh no 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 the. Uh, the differences between me and Cirque is the attraction in the long run. Because I've never met anybody like Cirque in my whole life. I am very different than Circle. Circle's a warm kind of person compared to me. And uh, I, I'm i pretty sure over the years of doing this here little chatter in RLM and uh, with RLO. Because <laughs> I stay off all the big stuff that... Um, Facebook and Twitter. Nah, it's good for you if you, you like Grimm. Grimm's got a web thing. He needs to be doing stuff like that. You know, that's part of the what he's doing. I'm me. I'm not teaching anybody nothing. I'm just Saturday. I broke down and I wrote a link. I read two links, two separate individual links on one show on a dork table of all places, because. I thought, you know, I could do this crap off my head. But I decided, well, let's throw a little um, reality from the other world that I don't participate in. We'll put that, well, I'd start using some of that on the radio. Give it a try. Mary does really good with it. And now, Grim does real good with it. And Moose does real good at it. Who else? Vinny does real good at it. I can't think of anybody that I've heard, you know, doing the links and giving me their very, you know, their input through it. I like that. I think it's, um, I think it's interesting sometimes. Not always because I agree with you either. Sometimes I don't. But disagreeing with somebody's opinion about a third party thing is pointless, you know. I, that's the cornerstone of why we don't get along with you know, each other, Republican, Democrat, nigger, white, uh, Jew, Catholic, all this, all these separations, because you're going to run into something. And it's in, it's in our, uh, it's in our environment. We're divided. We're, we divide ourselves. And I'm proving it, too, on the radio tonight. I'm making a choice to divide and going to do it. And I never really did want to do that. You know, but now there comes a time and you got to just be done with something. And not be wishy-washy and, you know, back and forth like some kind of dish rag people throw around. Because I, I would assume that uh, a lot of folk out there that have heard the show, I'm not saying the, the normal folk whom I get along with, but some of my opposition consider me like a weak, oh, good Lord, I've been called everything, tax evader. <laughs> I never once did I ever sign up for the damn uh, income tax, ever. I was always exempt from that nonsense because somebody had explained to me, hey, they got exempt there for a reason. Here, let me tell you why. <laughs> You're not going to believe this story. 
But if you do it, you go, wow, they're telling the truth. But the people that are doing the job, they lie to you. It is a totally voluntary system until you sign something. Then it's not voluntary. Then you volunteered through your signature. And that's how they have the jurisdiction to trap you and slap you around financially and put you in jail. Come out with guns and take your shit because of some imaginary fucking law that was never even really... I don't think that... Uh, there, it wasn't ratified. There's no... There's no federal tax law, income tax law. They just talked a big game and said so, and people just go along with it. But they catch you with the signature. And if you don't know what that means, then you're probably very new. Or you're voting still, because voters don't, they don't get that jargon. Well, then there's people that, like Circle, who are involved in the system, you know, at a level of understanding that's beyond my comprehension, because she actually works in it, but she doesn't live it. She That's her job. And the job that she has has got nothing to do with the system in the first place. She just plays on you know ideas and uh, computers, and it's creative stuff. Hmm. So, but if she had been in the, in the numbers crunching part of this financial game. I, I would have probably never been interested in her. I think the art thing about Cirque is incredible. You know, She's a really good painter, too. And uh, I, I was good when I was doing it. And the last time I drew something, it worked like I'd, you know, like I'd never stopped. So I'm just going to still assume I'm still capable. Because uh, my wife and me did something together once, but she's got stuff... Uh, that's still here in the house, I think. And she's she was drawing. Now she's got her, her crochet. She just loves the shit out of that. So she's always been fiddle farting around with, you know, making things and now I'm me. I'm I'm not I'm not a, a real creative person, but I'm good at reproducing what other people do. Now the creative side of me would be what to use. Or I'll take two different things that have never been put together before that I've seen. You know, I haven't seen other people do it, but I see, think it's my own idea. Somebody somewhere did it, but I never saw it. And I'll find myself doing it. And you just know that in this time in life, you're not going to ever accidentally do anything that somebody else didn't actually do. Accidentally do. There's too many of us. And we're English-speaking people. I was harping about this a while back. We are the minority Jeez, there's a lot more people that don't speak English in the world than there are that do. <clears throat> you know, I guess France is a—it's uh, a good example of it too, because I'll, you would say, "Well, the French know how to speak English." Yeah, well, the French do something that the uh, most of the rest of the countries, when they do it, doesn't get press time, and that's uh, revolt. Usually, when you hear about a, rent, a revolt, the first one that comes to my mind because of school is the French Revolution. I remember I'm always harping on that. Eh, the French Revolution. I don't know why. I don't remember it all that clearly now. But to think of it, that's where my mind goes. So that had to be what they were saying because I didn't invent it. The French Revolution, well, it seems to have spun around again because uh, during the American Revolution... The French were in it up to their eyeballs, too. And hell, Jefferson spent a, a little time over in France in that era. So, and Franklin, I think all of them did. Shit. This is a big game, you know, this world thing. Because it it's not possible. Well, now we have the technology to film everybody behind their back. But it, in history, it wasn't possible to travel in, you know, from New York to London in a few hours, <laughs> you know, now you can videotape the whole thing <laughs> and put it on YouTube. So secrets, where's your secrets? There's nothing left for us to hide, you know. And instead of just being honest, any any level of honesty would be acceptable at this point in my life. And all I've heard out of uh, out of the cannabis cannabis thing for the last. 80-something years, right? It's legal now. 
you can have four grams in your personal possession. If you have a card, you can get it from your doctor. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. That that's got that's still uh, the state. The state is still dictating to us what we can and cannot do, and how and how much. And and this other guy made a video, and he posted it on BitChute. I'm gonna try to open that link without opening the link, but I just want to identify it, and I'll post it on the uh, Real Liberty Media dot com chat room because uh it's worth noting i'm stalling here a little bit because i'm slower than a snail crossing the freeway when i try to do stuff on the interwebs yeah this was never my strong suit except over at world truth where people thought i was a super hacker and uh yeah i could do incredible things with the computer but shit i barely know how to turn the damn things on and off at the time yeah, this gentleman has a uh, bit shoot link. I'm copying it right now. I'm trying not to open it live on the air. I think I did. Okay. Aha. But I'm going to copy it now and put it over on the real liberty media dot com chat. And the fella is just very, um, very clear. And it's called, I'll quote it, give you a title. It's called An Open Invitation to Unsubscribe from My Channel. And it was really good piece because uh, he's not for the state in any way, shape, or form. But he says at one point in his life he was. So he chose to not do that. <laughs> to not support the state as an adult. Wow. I was fortunate to be like a, a rebel, black sheep, outcast, artist, hippie kind of guy because nobody was surprised. You know, the only thing that ever surprised anybody was that I had a passport, <laughs> and that was a fluke because my mom was English. Or I would, what would I have ever needed a, a passport for? Hmm. Well, who knew they were going to go back to the land where she came from? That was a big surprise, but they did it. And so now you got to think about this. Now the big thing in America right now, this takes up a lot of attention. Okay, is this stupid wall? <laughs> wow. Okay. So they're gonna what? They're gonna stop the the future influx, but in the meantime, ten percent of your population is illegal. That you, you you already know it. Well, if you already know it and you can account for that, the ones that are there are illegal. Why are they there if it's illegal? <laughs> now, I've come to the conclusion that there must be something in the writing of all this where it's not actually a law. It's a statute or a code of a law. And it makes what they're doing... Uh, not necessarily illegal. There's not really much you can do to these people. Because you got to really understand and go back in time a few hundred years to appreciate it. Once upon a time, there was a group of Indians could have been living right where your house sits now. <laughs> or maybe they didn't live there, but they hunted on the land that your house sits on now. Or it was a river or something. Anyway, you get the point I'm drifting towards. And uh, here come these European bastards going to take this land away from you and make it their own. Now, according to history, that's what happened. People just came and fought and killed off who was there and took it. Now it's ours. Now, you're Native Americans, and we're Americans, but you're Native Americans. Well, how could they be native to America if they were there before America was there? It's, it's a play on words that when I challenged it in school, they just told me to shut up. You're a troublemaker. Oh, you just want to cause problems. Well, no, the whole thing to me doesn't make any sense. If somebody came and, you know, murdered my family or half of my family and I'm what's left, but a hundred years from now, I'm going to be calling myself native to them, what the hell are you saying? You know, it's ridiculous. But 
we live in a, a, a land of lies and deceit in this imperfect world we're in. Where, you know, they show you the shiny coin and then they move their hand a certain way and it go, it's gone. Where'd it go? It's magic. It's gone. No, it's an illusion. Just like the life we, we've been given to live. <laughs> I don't know. This, well, we're, you're protected by the laws of the land. No, you're not. No, 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 no. And that's an act of commerce, though, that laws of the land shit, because you do the crime first. So, I would assume, if I went out and murdered somebody, shot them dead, that that's that for that person. So, how do you ever get anything repaid? It's money. Oh, Rob's on me now. No, Rob, don't, don't. I'm on the radio. I must do this for my soul, my friend. Deep inside, I have a voice that needs to be spoken. <laughs> I don't know. I've always enjoyed uh, telling stories and chitter-chattering about, you know, the, the things that I've been lucky enough to uh, be, have been told. And for being capable of listening to people tell me the most bizarre shit was when I was in my 20s. Because I heard a lot of weird shit that I I don't believe. But I some of these weird things that I did believe, they turned out to be, all these years later, the exact truth. You know, and we've lost that. Because now the the society's collapsing into itself. If you got homeless people living on major cities and shit like that, it's, it's decay. And if it's accepted in a, it, by the population as a, a a normal thing, then you're finished. It's just a matter of time. Something is going to go horribly wrong in a situation like that, where people are treated so insignificantly. Yeah, you know? if you don't treat people, you know, with a little respect every once in a while, no. Yeah, I was earlier, but you know when. If you're living in a tent on the street and that's completely okay with your government, I think that um, I think that's screwed. I don't think that would be um, acceptable. I don't know if I mean, it's, it is acceptable here. We got uh, we got some people that that crash down on the beach, but it's harmless. You know, they're not they don't do anything to anybody, so it's it's acceptable. But it's not like it's growing. They're the only two people I've ever seen do it in four years. So, you know, I'm still going to go with to each his own. But I would suspect, just in the long run, that living inside is, that's, you know, part of our nature is to be sheltered from the weather, you know, or the outside or the conditions or whatever it may be. Heat, cold, bugs. I don't know. Some people are allergic to plants. And I blame all that crap on on these inoculations. It all seems to uh, stem back to it. You can find the roots of all these problems right in the inoculations. And, of course, see, goes to your law. The lawyers that are in Congress and the doctors that are in Congress, they get together and they figure out how to make something common. And they just make laws. They make the law writ written so that the law can be broken. That's kind of what a license is to me. Because if you're going to do it, but you have a license to do it, well, if you're not breaking a law, what do you need the license for? Now, apparently, that's the opposite way of looking at it You know, than normal people. Most people would see it the other way. Well, you know, so you can be safe and insured and all this other crap so that when the uh when the state troopers stop you because you have a broken tail light and uh, they think they smell weed, you know, they can do their job. Now, me, I I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair because the difference between drunk driving and pot driving is well, there there's two different worlds right there. I I never drove a car drunk, but I drove a car high a lot. In fact, <laughs> when I first uh, was when 
I was a kid, and I was working in uh, Newport Beach, but I was living in, in a part of L.A., but I had this drive to Newport Beach, and I had a friend that had this really cool little sports car, and I talked him into letting me drive it one day. Anyway, so I drove wherever I was driving, and I was coming back, and I had a joint in my pocket, and I figured out, ah, toke up a little bit, and take a drive, and I did, and while I'm driving back to where I was supposed to be working that day, I, for a, just a few minutes, maybe not a few minutes, for a few moments, I completely lost track of where I was going. And I just had a blank, where the hell am I going? I had to look at the freeway signs to see where I was. Because, you know, I'm on autopilot driving in the first place. I've been driving so long by that point. I didn't need to be completely, you know, my body and mind worked in a car. But the thing was, I couldn't remember my destination for a brief period. And that's the extent of the damages I've ever endured from smoking marijuana. <laughs> I forgot where I was going. Had to look at the street sign and be reminded and go, oh, yeah, I'm going to work. So, I don't know. It could have been 10 seconds or it could have been a minute. But if that's uh, that's what all the people are trying to protect me from happening as a result of smoking the devil's lettuce. Wow. Thank you, guys. You know, but... Fortune has uh, always, after I was 14, uh, with the pot, always been with me. I've never been uh, arrested or hassled for pot. That's the weird thing. is, you. But uh, the enforcement people didn't really get as, as thick. The thicker they got, the further out of the big areas I'd go. <laughs> so I, I was in California till about 2002 and then it got too crowded you know it was like a it would take me an hour to drive from uh, San Fernando Valley to go to the Commerce Club I like to play cards maybe once a month get out there and you know see a few friends shit like that and uh but the drive it take an hour because traffic was so backed up there's so many people and this is wow how many years ago is that Woo, it's 19, so this is 17 years coming up on. It could have been this month. It could have been uh, December. I don't remember what month I was there last, but I had a lot of fun when I was in <laughs> See, I always have fun wherever I go. I mean, the place is incidental, and it's the people that you're around that matter. And if you can keep that thought in your head, I, well, mine, I keep it in my head. I always encounter, you know, nose to nose. The the worst times I've had is family and the internet. But uh, people I'm not blood related to or uh, related to through marriage outside of here in Denmark, um, that's never worked out. I don't understand it. You know, people in my family back home, some of them, they've they've gotten their success in their mind. I think off the the belief system they carry. You know, all my success uh, from living, ah, oh, bless your heart, ooh, the goody cirques got me the elixir of time, I'm telling you. Um, ginger and lemon. I was just, uh, I just did tea. <laughs> she brings me fancy stuff. Uh, how can you not love the woman? Anyway, I lost my completely derailed, that whole chain of thought just went up when I saw my wife with a glass of uh, ginger tea. So, I guess I'll just change gears and, hey, I got through an hour. I hope I haven't completely ruined everybody's night. Oh, yeah. I, see, I'm disappointed in, in the people that get voted into office make these rules and then they hire these this other party that doesn't know what the rules are. They have no idea. They just know that this is what my superiors tell me. That's as far as they go. They don't have law degrees or they'd be fucking lawyers, not running around with guns looking for, you know, mommy's rapers and daddy stabbers. I mean, does anybody give any thought to this idea at all? What kind of mentality does it take to want to put yourself in that kind of a position on a daily basis? As a as a matter of uh, that's your survival. That's what you're dependent on for a living. So hmm. 
I know. I'll go be a cop. That sounds like a wonderful career move. Well, damn. I mean, what do they pay these people in gold or something that it's so attractive? No. It's uh, it's about the same as being a crook with a badge. It's just the same thing. Because how could you possibly... I mean, well, me, I could never... I could never unprovoked do to other people when I've witnessed cops do to other people. It was at this point where Flash had a equipment malfunction, so he had to end the show early. He tried to come back on, but uh, there was a problem with his equipment, his hardware. So he'll be back again on the next week with the full show. Uh, don't don't bother with any of that. Thanks for listening to RLM Radio and Flash and in a perfect world. In a perfect world, you wouldn't have equipment malfunctions. Ha! <laughs> That's all. Peace.